Hello again. Thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja. Tonight I am continuing my talks regarding Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. And now we are into episodes three and four. Episode three, The Autopsy. Episode four, The Outside. I'm now beginning to see a particular theme with this. And I think that it's something worth considering for even the first two is that each of these like eight episodes are sequenced at least from this from this stand from three and four they are sequenced in a kind of pairing the first two episodes i could see like now in retrospect uh dealt with greed or desperation that being said i the feelings for the most part still hold up you know, fairly fairly well um so three and four Three and four, now we're really sort of gearing up. Now we're really getting into, <laughs> we're really getting into the meat of things, <laughs> with, especially with the autopsy. The autopsy is the vast of night meets reanimator. And I think it's just best to leave it as is, like with, with that description. Um, the, the episode is, uh, the front man of this episode is F. Murray Abraham. F. Murray Abraham, the Oscar-winning actor who is, he's done a lot of different things uh, throughout his career. He, uh, like most people will remember him for Amadeus. This one is, you know, in the autopsy. In the autopsy, the purpose of it is to, is to uncover the reason for the 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 depths of several I can, I, I'm gonna be honest with you I, I don't want to go into too many details about the autopsy for risk of I mean I just gave a comparison just like a second ago autopsies in general the purpose is to give details that the deceased can only provide now they give us details about how they live their lives. They give us details about, in, in the case of, let's say, untimely demise. They give us details about how they died, of course, but how they came to their demise, how they were murdered, you know. As someone who grew up with like his dad watching Forensics Files and True Crime, you know, this was an episode that actually did kind of hit hit home a little bit. It's sort of like, okay, because the investigation of the dead is something that is taken very seriously because of what is possibly revealed, you know. You know, was someone poisoned? Were they beaten? What type of heinous instruments were used to bring about their death? And when it comes to criminal autopsy, that is the beginning and the end of it. That is, that is the goal. It's to discover how the victim became a victim, unfortunately. So the autopsy is... I, I will say this. I... It does stand out in terms of body horror, like ve very powerfully so. So if you're someone like, I, if you're into a horror anthology series, like it should kind of go without saying, you're gonna see some disturbing things. Now I've, I've seen my fair share of movies. I've seen, I, I've seen some stuff, you know? But I mean, like, it's, the autopsy does have very powerful body horror. Like this is the this is David Cronenberg level of like body horror. Um, there are certain depictions of self harm. Netflix usually does a very very good job with its like you know um, if if you are someone that is triggered by like lights or if you are someone da 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 like they usually have good uh, like like content uh content warnings they usually do have some decent content warnings there i felt like there should have been something with regards to like self-harm 
Now, that being said, a character doesn't self-harm due to any sort of, like, anguish or mental illness or anything like that. So, I, you know, uh, it, it wasn't voluntary. And even then, I feel like I'm giving away, like, too much. Story-wise, it makes sense. But I will, even, even though Netflix did not mention this, please be aware that there are several significant portions to the autopsy that contain graphic depictions of self-harm. So just, just bear that in mind. Now, from the autopsy, where the horror comes from the prospect of an interior investigation, then we have the outside. The outside, I've, I, to, to be honest, I, like to this point, from one to four, I think it has the most... I think it has the greatest prospect of a non-supernatural horror, like, occurring. So, what it is, is that this woman, uh, she lives what, you, what some people might call, she lives an ordinary life. And she doesn't like that. She, she, she wishes she could be like this... this in group of ladies that work at her job, she works at a bank, and these ladies, they are, they are very tightly knit. That being said, uh, the group, like her coworkers that she idolizes are incredibly, incredibly vile. To, to, to be honest, like, uh, uh, we all have those like troublesome coworkers. You know, um, and some hey, sometimes you're lucky. Sometimes they like come and go, and no longer pollute your workspace. Thankfully, but then again, sometimes I mean they're just kind of installed there for years and years, and there's absolutely nothing. I, I think I don't quite know when the outside is set. It's kind of suggested the. I don't know because they have cell phones and they have flat screen TVs, but fashion wise. It's the 1980s. It's weird. Like, so, so it's kind of like an alternate reality where the fashions of the 1980s just never left, but technology kept moving on. I don't know. Anyways, like, aside from that, I apologize. So aside from that, like, even though she sees that this group of women are incredibly toxic, I mean, they carry on conversation. Like, they work at a bank and they work behind sort of like the plexiglass screens that, you know, like... If you go to a bank, it, it's probably very, very difficult for any of the patrons to hear what's going on behind the plexiglass. You know, uh, sometimes they have to be buzzed or sometimes, you know, they just have to speak at just, you know, a certain vocal register range to where the, just people can't hear them. It's, it's almost soundproof, almost. And these ladies, like I said, they are incredibly corrosive. They talk about everyone's business in really lewd graphic intimate detail you know and it's just it's just it's just heinous it's terrible they're all so vapid and shallow and materialistic and our main character wants to be one of them like i, I there are some people that they they would just love anything anything to be in the in crowd you know to have that companionship to have that in 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 this case you know for her to want to fit in with these women she wants that sorority she wants to be worthy of being their friends and and the purpose of that episode in particular the outside is the extraordinary lengths that she is willing to go to even to the point of destroying herself to, to fit in, to fit in. I think it's it's something that you usually only see in like, you know, and there have been stories like this. You usually only say like now, sort of like popularly with like, oh, this is a mindset that only belongs to like, like adolescents or like teenagers or something like that. But like, no, I, I think they actually did a really good job of highlighting because I think the main character is at a point of a midlife crisis. And... You know, she feels stagnant. She feels like her life hasn't amounted to much and, and she doesn't amount to much. And so that's why she's willing to go to such drastic measures. 
I, th this is my theory, and I think that this theory doesn't include any spoilers, so that's why I'm sharing it. I think the events as depicted the outside are depictions of a psychotic break. And that'll be it. And that, yeah, and that'll be it. Episodes three and four are really sort of like showing like the power that these types of like stories that like, can have. And I, I, they're, they're, they're very, very, very satisfying. I will say this, like if you go into it after watching only episodes one and two, and you think to yourself, well, only half of these are going to be like, enter like entertaining. No, I guarantee you like the autopsy and the outside will solidify the, 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 the quality, you know, for the, for the viewer, like, okay, now I know what to expect. Okay, and now I know what to expect, and I like it. So, so there, we, so there you, there you have it. That's my sort of like summary. Uh, so episodes three and four, um, it's hard. Once again, it's hard to sort of like compare everything as of like right now, as of only being at the midpoint. But but still, I will say that it is it is very very satisfactory as things are right now. And so, like I said, I will I will leave it at that for now. Have you seen? Uh, Guillermo del Toro's Cabinet of Curiosities. What is your like from episodes one to four? Because if if someone has seen ahead, you know, like don't spoil anything for anybody. But from episodes one to four, what are your thoughts? You know, let me know in the comments section. Thank you very much for joining me here on Movie Ninja, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.